Hello again, everybody. It's John with Best Price Nutrition. Uh, today we have Bruce from Garden of Life. Uh, he's going to help answer some questions. We've uh, gotten some requests from you guys on the blog and on our videos about some of these products. Um, so Bruce is here to address them. He's the uh, product trainer for Garden of Life. Would that be That's an right. accurate yeah, description? I'm, I'm the Midwest educator for Garden of Life. So. Okay. Um, today we're going to start with Wobenzyme. Uh, it's a very, very popular product. Uh, Garden of Life recently purchased Wobenzyme. Um, Bruce, you want to give us a quick brief history on Wobenzyme? Yeah, sure. I mean, Wobenzyme is really sort of a legend in the industry. It's, it created the whole category of systemic enzyme therapy. This came, back, this came out in the 50s. I mean, it's almost 60 years old now. And basically, it gets its name from two doctors who were looking at oncologists. They were actually oncologists. They were, they were studying aberrant proteins and cellular masses in the body. And they basically, their names were Max Wolf and Helen Benitez. And so the name Wolfenzyme is the kind of play on their names, Wolf Benitez Enzyme. So it's actually Wolfenzyme is, is the Wolf Benitez Enzyme. And basically, it's, it's been in Germany for a long, long time. It's, it's very much a mainstream type of therapy over there. I think sometimes we, we see enzyme therapy as a very alternative style of treatment. But in a lot of parts of the world, this is not alternative medicine at all. Aren't we seeing now, I think, uh, if some of you guys saw the, read the book or heard anything about it, the knockout book by Susanna Summer, she actually addressed, there's actually some oncologists who are, you know, opening up their minds to some of this treatment because certain forms of cancer we know are very, very, they respond very well to chemo. I think uh, testicular cancer being one of them, just as an example. Uh, but other ones, look, the numbers, the data, it's just not there in terms of curing it in some other forms. And yeah. not to say that this is a cure, but there are people who are actually getting some funding for some empirical studies that's, on that's these, That's exactly right? right. Yeah, there's quite a bit of data. And, and actually, that book kind of goes into the, the story of Nick Gonzalez, who runs a clinic up in New York. And he has, actually, he has a book out um, about the origins of cancer and kind of looking at trophoblasts, which are gets sort of technical, but it's sort of this idea about the how aberrant cells develop and, and how this product and enzyme therapy in general can really affect some of our immune system in some pretty profound ways in terms of making sure that our cells are not an aberrant or mutated cell. So it really performs a census. It helps our census takers. Good. Yeah, I found it interesting because when I first saw it, I'm like, oh, Suzanne Summers, and then, you know, personally, yeah. I'm skeptical, I'm reading, and then you go and look, and actually, she actually addresses and says, hey, there are certain things um, that radiation and chemo are very good for, certain right. forms of cancer, but Otherwise, you know, some of these other forms, you're just getting a death sentence. So why don't we try some of these other things? And like I said, some of these oncologists are actually having success with, you know, forms of cancer that yeah. otherwise wouldn't. And that's not to say that this is a cure or anything. I just want to give that as yeah, a... Absolutely. Um, this is not meant to, to treat or, or diagnose or mitigate a disease. Um, but it is. It, it has been studied in certain cultures where, they, where doctors do use it to, to, in a more serious way, more, more profound types of conditions. Sure. That using. Yeah, and I think the point I want to get across here, and I'm sure Bruce, you're with me too, is that... You know, when we talk about these things, sometimes it's thought to be taboo. You're automatically a kook if you mention anything alternative. And, and sometimes, yeah, I would be one of those people who'd say it when I hear some, you know, really silly things. Trust me, being in the industry, yeah. I am very defensive of it because, you know, the industry gets made fun of for Absolutely. some of the nonsense that's out there. You know, Absolutely. I'm very much informed skepticism. I right. want to see data. I Absolutely. want to see results. So Right. And I, I agree. I mean, I think they're, like any industry, there really are charlatans out there. Sure. And so you, you do, you have to sometimes have... Keep an open mind, but also take everything with a grain of salt. And I think uh, when you look at, at the, the substantiation behind Wobenzyme, there's almost nothing else in the whole industry. Not an herb, not a vitamin, not a mineral, in terms of a formulation that has this kind of, of data, you know, this mm -hmm. kind of, of substantiation for decades. I mean, this is not something that's been through you know, just a few studies. There's actually about a, over a thousand total studies, in, including you know, in vitro, animal models, and clinical studies. So we've, we've studied this in humans for, for decades. We, we know a thing or two about it. So in general, who would be the consumer who would be looking to take Wolfenzyme? Is it There's, anybody or...? Well, almost anybody could get a benefit. I mean, I should mention that there are animal-based ingredients. Uh, so those following a kosher or halal diet, because it does use animal glands from both porcine and bovine sources, meaning we're using, like, pigs and cows. These are from Argentina. They are grass-fed. Um, this is not, you know, no anabolic steroids or growth hormones are used. But for those who are, who are following a, a kosher halal diet, they will not want to be using anything that's an animal-based enzyme. Um, but that being said, the uses for this product are very, very broad. It's almost hard to cover them all because there's so many physiological responses. It's often used for pain and inflammation. I mean, generally, that's how they often use it, is affecting swelling, pain, mobility, bringing blood flow and oxygen to our tissue. And actually, one of the main things Wobenzyme is researched for is simply cleaning up cellular debris, knocking down the inflammatory proteins. It actually does degrade both fungus and yeast in the body and also viruses. It's actually a very potent antiviral in a lot of research. 
Um, there's quite a bit of data in terms of scar tissue. This is something that will slowly dissolve and eat up old scar tissue. There's research on beta amyloid placking. Um, a lot of research on different types of autoimmune states, uh, helping balance out what they call the Th1 and Th2 lines in our body. These get into the thymus cells, the thymic helper cells. You have your T helper cells. And that this is a really important part of immunology, which gets incredibly complex. But in general, this is something that has a lot of data in terms of balancing out the immune system and has specific research into various autoimmune diseases. So I guess if you were to wrap it up, you could almost say that you know the enzyme, enzymes play such a key role in the body that sometimes people don't even understand what, what they do, you know, lowering yeah. activation energy, allowing reactions exactly. to take place, I mean, things like that. Yeah. Now there's environmental factors, I assume, that are going on now in the world that we live in that is inhibiting some of our ability to produce these at an optimal level, at least for a lot of people, is that kind That's of where you say this coming We make enzymes. Our body endogenously or in our, we already secrete enzymes. It's just that they fall short. Our, our diets are very different than they once were. We used to eat enzyme-rich foods, raw foods, cultured foods, foods that had a lot of enzyme value. Nowadays, our enzymes that we're making are often just being consumed. They're falling short mm -hmm. of doing, carrying out of the fundamental uses of enzymes and basically every biochemical process from thinking, moving, talking, breathing, those all require enzymes on some level. So they're very fundamental to almost every function. You brought up something interesting. So with food, I mean, isn't it true that if you cook your food, obviously we need to do it for certain reasons so I get sick and so on and so forth, but right. cooking, I mean, and enzymes are, are proteins, so you're going to denature the tertiary That's structure, right. correct? That's exactly right. Yep. Okay. Now, if somebody were to take this in terms of dosage, um, you know, let's just say you're somebody who has some joint pain, let's say that that's your main reason for taking woven enzyme, or hypothetically you're just somebody who feels that you're falling short on your enzymes you want to take it, how would you recommend dosage or what have you heard in terms well, of that? Well we put on our label a, a six a day is kind of a typical use and we use an advanced usage of 12 per day. Now I should, I should say here that in Germany this is sort of, these would be considered very low dose. I mean in Europe where this is more of a kind of almost a pharmaceutical type of usage. It's actually considered the ninth best-selling medication or drug on the German market outright. Uh, so it, it's very heavily used, and in, in that country they tend to use it in, in much higher dosages. Um, I've seen protocols going up to over 100 per day, which sounds like a lot. Uh, they, they are very small, they're, they're kind of M&M shaped, I would say a little, little flatter than M&M, so they're not, they're just not quite like swallowing, you know, 100, uh, you know, full amino acid or mineral type, you know, horse pills. But, they do go up in that type of dosage. In general, the smallest size they sell in, in Germany is 800. You know, that's our biggest size here. That's just to kind of give you an indication. They typically will put people on protocols of, of 30 or 40 a day. Now, they're doing it under the care of a, of a doctor and, and a physician. So you do need a prescription in Germany to take this product? Yeah, well, it's actually now over the counter. Oh, it is it over the counter. Be, okay. For a long time, it was prescription. So they freed it up a little yeah. bit, got rid of some of the regulation. Right. Now, another question we get a lot of is, now that it has the Garden of Life logo on there, you know, a lot of people are wondering, is this the same as the one that I used to get in Germany with the uh, mucosa, um, mucos pharma? Mucos pharma yeah. um, um, the story there is that we actually, we didn't really buy them. Uh, Atrium bought us. Okay. So we're now under the banner of Atrium. And Atrium owns Mucos Pharma. They also own Douglas Laboratories and Pure Encapsulations and a few other kind of practitioner lines, meaning these are lines that they sell to doctors. And basically, Mucos Pharma is now partnered with us under the Atrium banner. Uh, when, we, when we partnered with them, we had a few stipulations. I mean, we're, a, we're really stickler about ingredients. That's one of the things about Garden of Life. We, are, we really scrutinize every material that goes into each product. And therefore, when we're, we're, we're partnering with this company and their sort of pharmaceutical tradition, some of the ingredients that they were using, which are perfectly uh, acceptable in the pharmaceutical landscape, just won't really work in the natural products. We're, we're really stickler about not having artificial vanilla not having a, a polymer coating for the enteric coating. We want natural vanilla. We don't want corn polysaccharides. We don't want, you know, triethyl citrate and all these kind of different additives and binders and agents that were there to build the tablet. But as far as the actual meat, the brunt of the enzyme, nothing has changed. It is still made in Germany. It's still the exact same formulation. Um, Wobenzyme N is one of six Wobenzyme formulations that have been out in the last 50 plus years. Um, N stands for new. But it really isn't very new. It's been out in this country since 1991 in the same version. So we have not actually changed any of the enzymes or the or the sourcing of those mm -hmm. enzymes. It's just some of the we've cleaned it up. In other words, we've gotten rid of some of the the tableting agents, binders, and, binders okay. and such. We we really want a clean one. And that's because this is a different market here in the United States. You are going after you know your vitamin people who are more sensitive to those things. It's also gluten free, dairy free, and no yeah. no soy allergens. Yeah, so. We really want to have something hypoallergenic and can be used by almost anybody. Yeah, we really want to hit that because we get a lot of questions from people. Hey, you guys sent me the wrong product, or this isn't the same one. Right. There's no way that Garden of Life can throw 
the trademark Wolvenzyme on there and, and get yeah. away with it. No, we're never going to so change no... anything um, because then we'd have to redo all that research. Yeah. <laughs> there's just, there's we, not, we're not going to do that. It all be forgotten, <laughs> so. Yeah. Okay. Well, that pretty much covers it for Woven Time. I hope uh, we answered some of you guys' questions. Please feel free to post any others in the uh, comments section. And thanks. Have a great day. Thanks, Bruce. Yeah, thank you.